Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Purpose Driven Live Sports. I'm back here for some more NBA videos, some more news, and things of that nature. So, before I start talking about uh, my main topic, I just wanted to let you guys know if you didn't hear already that Russell Westbrook is probably going to be traded from the Oklahoma City Thunder unless somebody wants that uh, red, stupid contract that he has, which is four years, $171 million left on it. So, after Paul George was traded, it's what Oklahoma City did basically was they talked to him. I believe in basically they come to an agreement that they're going to shop him and see what kind of offers they get. The Miami Heat and the Houston Rockets, there's another team I'm not mentioning. Oh, yeah, the Detroit Pistons are looking at them. I think Miami Heat and Detroit Pistons are the best options. I wouldn't want him going to the Houston Rockets because the Houston Rockets already got James Harden and Chris Paul. I wouldn't really see that as a great fit either way because three of those guys – Need to have the ball to be effective, and then basically James Harden is a guy who can't do anything else without the ball. So there's that. So Miami Heat, that would be good because he'd be with uh, Jimmy Butler. But to me, Jimmy Butler wants to be a solo act. So I don't know if that would be successful for the foreseeable future, but that remains to be seen. And the Detroit Pistons need another guard, like a legit guard. So who would they trade? Probably... Reggie Jackson, I don't know where they would trade him to. That would probably be a three-team deal because I don't think Oklahoma City wants. Reggie Jackson, even though I think his deal expires either this year or next year, and he's on a really team-friendly contract. So if I'm, the, if I'm the Thunder, I probably would take his contract, you know, maybe. But, you know, it all depends here. So <clears throat> but I want to talk to you guys about the NBA Summer League, which is basically where first-year rookies and then second-year players actually play in the Summer League for their team affiliates. And uh, last night, I was watching highlights. How's the highlights? I was watching uh, Jackson Hayes, who plays for the New Orleans Pelicans. He was drafted number 10 overall. Now, when I told you guys about him after after the draft, I said this guy was athletic. He was a defensive beast. What I didn't know was he was a guy who's going to be smacking shots off the glass, uh, dunking over people, dunking every time he caught the ball. Like I was really watching his highlights, and I was amazed because... I knew he was athletic. I didn't know he was this athletic. And the shame is is that Zion Williamson will not be playing for the rest of the summer league because he got injured, which to me we got robbed as fans because I think after one injury, you know, these guys, they're not going to get to play against competition for like months at a time now because once summer league is gone, then you got a couple months or more until, you know, training camp starts and preseason, then NBA season really kicks off. So there's not much of another chance for them to get in shape or get some, you know, competition in. So why the hell would you just want to sit him for all this time? You see, this is my problems with GMs, you know, trying to, I know they're trying to, you know, keep their players healthy, you know, trying to make sure that their future is secure. But like, but damn, man, seeing those two, seeing him, Jackson Hayes by himself makes me worried for the rest of the league when Zion Williamson comes back. Because... As great as it is, I know there's going to be older players that they're playing against, and that athleticism is only going to help them to a certain extent. But Jesus Christ. The way he dunked on one dude last night, it, it, it's probably the best summer league dunk in history. Like, he's, his head is literally nearly at the rim, and then and then he was halfway over the guy who's trying to take a charge. I'm going to tell people this. If you play basketball and a guy's about to dunk on you, don't take a charge. You might as well just get the hell out the way because at that point you're just asking to get dunked on for some unknown reason. I would just think you need to just move out the way. Like I'm kind of getting sick of guys doing that. So uh, that was just a warning. I truly, I've never been dunked on. Don't plan on getting dunked on and will never look to challenge a guy who's dunk. Never mind. Okay, so yes, the New Orleans Pelicans, Jackson Hayes. That guy, I think you guys need to watch in the summer league. Um <clears throat> He 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 was he blocked a shot with his elbow off the glass. Like he literally, I think he almost jumped over the guy to block it too. Like he was high up in the air again. He goes up like this. I saw something. I saw something right here block the ball because it clearly wasn't his hand. That's how high up he was. So that shot was negated. He blocked another one off the glass earlier in the game. He probably blocked another one that I forgot I, I saw. So he's athletic. He can rebound. He can dunk. He's a smart player. I. I'm going to be watching him in the league because that was something. That's why Summer League summer league exposed you to, you know, players who really show their talents because what it really is to me is like, you know, when you're in high school and you're running open gyms and things like that, getting up and down the court, well, that's what that's what basically uh, Summer League is. And I like it because I think coaches don't really coach. They're just trying to get you uh, 
acclimated to the NBA. They may call a couple plays and stuff like that, but to me, it's more of them just, you know, making sure that you're getting in shape to a certain extent because before the draft, there's like a couple months or more off because the March Madness ends, which is the college tournament. So there's that point. But if there's another team I would tell you guys to watch, now I may sound like I'm biased, but the Golden State Warriors summer league team is truly impressive. Now, I like Jordan Poole. Jacob Evans has played really well as well. He's actually, he's not a point guard, but he's handling point guard duties. He's shooting well from the field, making a lot of mid-range shots. Jordan Poole is extremely athletic. He can jump out the gym. He can shoot the three ball exceptionally well. And then they have this one rookie from Serbia. I forgot his name, but I'll definitely get that name to you guys in the next video. But this rookie, this guy is 6'10". He's athletic. He can drive by bigs. Or he can just post up smaller guys. And he can pass. He's actually a really great defensive player for his size. So, you know, it's 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 moves like this that's going to keep going to stay on, like, in contention for years to come. Because making moves like this, drafting a guy like Jordan Poole, making sure that Jacob Evans is seeing point guard duties, making sure his ball handling is getting there, getting him some shooting touches, all that. And then getting this guy from Serbia, from their they drafted him from their G League team because he was about to go to the Pelicans as well. I mean, think about all the stuff that the Pelicans are doing. Don't forget Nikhil Alexander for the Pelicans as well. He's a really great passer. I saw some whip-around passes that he was throwing to Jackson Hayes on a couple of dunks. This 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 New Orleans Pelicans team is going to be good for years to come. I'm I'm kind of the league is kind of uh, we're talking about the Lakers, we're talking about the Clippers, but a lot of young teams I think that are coming up are going to surprise people and going to be good for a long time. New Orleans is going to be one of those teams along with the Atlanta Hawks. So be on the lookout for that. Anyway, back to the point. So Golden State getting developing these kind of guys is something that needs to be said. Also, the Warriors actually did trade for somebody from the Atlanta Hawks. His name is Armari Spellman. He actually came from Villanova. I watched him play because the last time Villanova won a national championship, which was back in 2018, which was last year, he was actually on that team, and then he got drafted to the Atlanta Hawks this last year in the NBA draft. So he's going to the Warriors. I think that's a good pick because of his size, his versatility. He was actually a really good shot block over there. He could shoot the three. He was a pretty good rebounder because that Villanova team last year was filled with a bunch of players that you've seen in the league, especially from Dallas. Jalen Brunson, Dante Divinchenko, who actually plays for the Milwaukee Bucks. So... And then Eric Pascal, who actually got drafted by the Warriors this year, was actually on that team last year. So, uh, and they actually played the same position, I think. They're both very versatile. They can rebound. They can shoot, like I just said. They're both really good shot blockers. So, what Golden State is really doing is they're not getting too many tall players necessarily, but what Golden State likes to do is get players who are very versatile, like a Draymond Green, who's not really big on size, but are really smart players. They're very versatile, can switch pick and rolls. Because Golden State really lacked that last year with the players that they actually brought to the team because of, you know, the limited cap space that they have. And they still have limited cap space, but they're still going out and getting players on short-term deals, rookies. So Golden State is not a team that I will be sleeping on. I'll be watching them very closely because I like the picks that they have. I think defensively is where we're going to see them improve upon from last year because of all the all the guys that they're really getting. And without without... A Clay Thompson, the perimeter to me is going to be the is going to be a concern, maybe. But I also think because they have a paint protector and Willie Colley Stein, guys who can switch the pick and roll, they can actually stymie all that all that perimeter stuff that they like to do, all the screens. They're going to be able to defend that better this year. So I like those moves that they're making. But once again, guys, the summer league. I, I'm after what I saw last night. Definitely got to be tuning into that, watching all the highlights, uh, tune into a couple games. I actually play games pretty much every day. So it's in Las Vegas. <clears throat> Definitely going to tune into that. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. So Russell Westbrook is on the trade block, and Summer League is going pretty well. I think that's all the news I got for you guys. So I want you guys to have a great day. It's Purpose Dream Life Sports. Sports news, sports talk, and I will see you guys next time.